Right, hi everybody, it's uh, Chris, 2E0UKH, and we are looking at the Retavis RT23. Uh, Retavis kindly sent me two of these over, and um, we'll be going out doing some tests with a friend so we can see what, you know, what the other one sounds like, what the audio's like, hitting some repeaters, trying to hit, trying to listen to the space station repeater, and um, yeah. The reason I agreed to do this review is because I've had one before and I actually know they're pr they're pretty good, very good for the money. You know, this is a it's I think at the moment it's about I've seen it for about 50 pounds. You know, the price varies. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, it's just another Baofeng, but it's not. It's it looks like it and I can see why you would think that. It's got the same you know, display the menu structure is a lot more different. Um, it's got dual line receive, so you can listen to different things simultaneously on the top and bottom. You've got two transmit buttons. You've got dedicated volume and squelch. Sorry, volume and channel. You don't see that on radios in this price point even the asu ft4x doesn't have that you know that's uh one of these entry level yasus so you've got the dedicated buttons i love that you've got cross band repeater mode so you can use it as a repeater if your license uh, conditions allow it's got very good filtering and I'll just show you a few differences with the uh, the system because it does look very much like a Baofeng it's not it's much better so you you got the you got the top and the bottom line I hope you can see that in focus and if you long press the, this button on the left on the top left the AB button you can turn off one of the lines if you press it again you can swap them over so this one's on the top now when you go into the programming you know the menus press menu you know the familiar menu we're used to on these radios if I use the clicker knob on the top it makes it a lot easier you can flick around these menus and if you want to alter an item on the menu, you just press it again, the menu button, it goes down. And I'm, I can use the clicker knob on the top to alter the menu item. So that's really handy. And it's also extremely easy to program repeaters on these on the fly without any computer software. You can use Chirp, but on this one, on the RT23 you can just set it up in the VFO the channel with an offset and a tone and you save it to the radio you, you actually long press the menu button it's not done in the menu options you long press the menu button and you choose a channel and you only have to do it once on the Retavis you only have to do it once on the uh, on the UV5R and all the copies you have to do it twice you have to do it once for the receive and once for the transmit tone so uh, easy to use you know great to have the additional controls on the top you know for volume and channel very crisp very good audio and um, I'm going to be showing you a few demos where I pick up the space station repeater using that supplied aerial. I hit a, a repeater 50 miles away and speak to someone who's 50 miles further away than the repeater. And um, we also go out and do a simplex test. So uh, enjoy the video. Sorry. 
uh, Delta Fox being Victor. Yeah, Golf 1 Alpha Alpha Kilo, uh, just a complete Golf 0 Fox Golf X ray, uh, all copied, and your 590 to Oscar 70. Dear Charlie, thanks for the contact. Okay, cheers, 7. Golf 1 Alpha Alpha Kilo. Right, hi everybody. It's uh, Chris 2E0UKH. I'm out in the countryside. Really incredible we weather we're having at the moment, and um, I'm out testing the Retavis. This is the RT23. This is an incredible radio. It's super cheap. It's got proper dual line receive. You can receive totally simultaneously on line A, line B. It's got repeater mode on it, so you can use it as a repeater if it's legal in your country. It's not here for me. It's to do with the power and my license condition. And um, as well as that, it's a very easy to program radio. The, you know, the operating system it's running, it looks like a UV5R, it looks like a Baofang, but when it comes to the section, where you program a repeater in, you've only got to do it once. You set it up in the VFO, you open a repeater, and then when you go to write it to memory, you just do it once. Makes it much easier. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna try and get into uh, GB3PI, which is about 40, I'm, I'll check it on the map. It's about 45 miles from here, something like that. I'm only on the stock rubber duck that comes with it. They're never anything special, but they're adequate if you're in a good location. I'm in a good location. Let's, I mean, I know I can open it, but I've, I've just set it up previously, but just try and open it. Nothing, hang on. Okay, so I'm opening the repeater. Let's see if anyone can come back. 2E0 UKH, out portable. GB3PI. Yeah, okay, the battery's dying this way. Um, whereabouts are you, Andy? 2E0 UKQ, 2E0 UKH. Spalding, awesome. Yeah, well, that's awesome. My battery's very low this end, so uh, you're in Long Sutton, Spalding, correct? Yeah, that is correct. That is correct. Okay, well, that's awesome. We're going through GB3PI. It's about 45 miles from me. How far is it from you? Um, if you give us a sec, I'll, uh, check. So, uh, my battery is, my battery is pretty low. Hope it doesn't go dead. But he's in Spalding. Spalding to Royston, Hertfordshire is going to be quite a way. And I think someone's keying us out as well, so... <laughs> We're doing yeah, well. 4.1 miles from Mundell. Okay, well that's fantastic. From me, it's in the 40s, 45, 50, no, 40, 45 miles. So that's excellent. Anyway, thanks for the contact. It's a bit, it's a bit um, hit and miss this end, but we made it. Thank you very much for the contact, Andy. Seven three. Right, so I'm out on the bike. I've just dropped off the other handheld. I've got two of these uh, Retavis RT23. I've just dropped the other one off at Jimbo's house, and uh, I'm about half a mile, mile away from him. And I just wanted to get a bit of audio, you know, they're good enough to send me two of them. I'll uh, get a bit of audio so you can see what, what Jimbo sounds like on the other one. So I'll just key up.
G1JSP uh, 2E0 UKH. Are you there, Jimbo? G1JSP returning. Uh, yeah, fantastic signal, Chris. Um, the audio on these is really crisp. Um, very impressed. It uh, cuts through. Uh, really good, really good. Back to you. Yeah, you're right, and I'm actually, I'm actually speaking into the camera, not into the radio. So it would be a lot louder. It would be a lot louder than this. But uh, yeah, pretty decent, pretty decent. I'm quite impressed. Yep, yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know. It seems to be feel feel like it's well built. And, uh, clear display. Just a nice little unit, I have to say. Um, you're giving me, that's hard to say really, but it looks like it's full full signal um, on the receive. Um, don't know how far you are away, but, uh, but yeah, full full uh, full scale deflection, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah, OK, I think we got a talk out timer there with a little bleep, but no worries, you know, I haven't set... I haven't um, set these up. I just handed it to you with a frequency on it. But, uh, yeah, like you say, very crisp audio. No complaints with the audio. And um, now you've got it on a... You've just got it in the house, haven't you? You're not, you're not outdoors with it. You're just in the house. So, uh, I mean, I, I agreed to do this review because I knew what they're like. I've, I've had one before. You know, they're pr they're pretty decent and they're a lot better than the Bayo Fang. Yeah, I mean, even uh, I mean, we know that the uh, the FT three D has its troubles for audio quality, um, and you take the rubber bung out the side, it fixes it. But these, this is superb. It's it's a really good audio quality, um, and uh, I. Uh, if you just wanted a standard off-the-shelf um, VHF UHF handy, then great value for money, I think. Back to you. Yeah, Roger on that. Well, what with the, that, and it's got dedicated volume and channel buttons, you know, which a lot of these beginner, you know, getting started radios don't have. It's got repeater mode on it. It's got proper dual receive on line A and line B. You know, and it's super easy to program. It does work with chirp. But, uh, yes, I'm most impressed. Much better than a UV5R. But, you know, not many people know about these ones. Yeah, do you want JSP returning? Um, that's great. Um, and if you were sort of limited budget etc etc and you've got a, a couple of repeaters close by and I think these they'd also be fantastic for repeater working because as I say the audio is it's really clear really clear back to you yeah well you get what you pay for you know these uh, I think they're about 45 pound that I've seen them vary in price but at the moment I think they're about 40 45 pound and um I think these have got a bit better filtering. You know, these are. I think these are one step up on the uh, UV5R, but I've not seen many people talk about them or use them. Yeah, one of the biggest problems is there's that many, there's that many radios and bits of kit out there that sometimes it, uh, it's because it's not a minefield. It just you don't know where to start looking or which one to choose, and uh, sometimes there's not many reviews um, or. The only reviews you do get in the local rags, um, you know, the practical wireless stuff like that. But uh, no, very good. Back to you. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thanks for helping me out and um, just giving us a little sample of the audio. And um, I'm getting loads of flies all over me. I don't like it here. I'll say seven three, and I'll see you Saturday night. Many thanks for helping out. Alright, but no worries, mate. Glad to help any time. And uh, yeah, see you Saturday. Um, and uh, take care cycling. No, seventy-three, mate. G1 JSP now going clear of the frequency.